Welcome back to part three, um, where we run through essentially how to make sure that this data API that we've now exposed for Bubble and the data that we have in Xano, how do we ensure that this is secure and only people that are authorized can access? So something to note that um, I probably should have ran through in our first session and, and uh, a user reached out to me and let me know this. So thank you so much for the feedback. Uh, essentially inside of Z da uh, Bubble, we have privacy um, policies. And for the data types uh, that I was using before, customer, by default, um, Bubble doesn't actually provide a, um, any authorization required to access this data unless we set up some privacy rules. So um, importantly, what does that mean? Um, if I basically, without setting up any privacy rules, if I try to access the endpoint that we were using before to pull in the customer data, you'll see that if I run this, which you can do in your own browser, you'll see that all of the customer data that we're accessing is um, able to be received without needing to pass in that API key that we added. So in order to secure the data, we need to add a privacy rule uh, to the, the, the data type. So in this one in particular, what we're doing is I'll be adding this one here, and we need to make sure that we have at least one rule um, at the top here um, that's going to become true. So in this example, current user is logged in, is going to apply this rule. And then whenever this condition isn't true, it means everybody else is going to receive the permissions below. And if we uncheck all of the permissions, meaning they have no access, and I rerun this, none of the data is now available. So it's secure, which is fantastic. If we rerun this again, and we want to secure uh, or expose some data, we can make it find this in searches. And we can also select the data um, fields that we want to make visible. So our company, which is a relationship, and then the date. If we run this again, we'll see that we've got those fields exposed. So I'm going to disable these for privacy reasons, of course. And now inside of Xano, we still have that we have our API that we're calling. So the same URL as we're accessing here, but instead we have the authorization bearer added into our header of the request. So I put a stop into bug, so we're gonna get the, the response we received from this external request. If I run this, you'll see that I can now access this data again in a secure way. And we run this, everybody else is unable to access it unless they've got that secure API key. So that's really um, securing our bubble database. And we've now got our data API secured. So you'll need to make sure that for each data type that you've exposed, you've got those privacy rules set up. And then inside of Xano, we need to make sure we've done the same as well. So by default, when you set up your, your tables inside of Xano, you actually get um, created for you um, as an option, the create, read, update, and delete endpoints for those particular tables. So our customer table, we're able to out of the box without doing anything, get all of our customer records like we, we've done with the Bubble Data API. We can add new records via this API, we can delete customers and so on. So going through the same scenario of um, essentially what we were doing with Bubble before, where we want to get a list of all of our records, um, I can actually copy the endpoint URL for this item here. And you'll see at the very top, currently, this is a public endpoint, meaning that it's not secure. So when I copy this endpoint and I paste it into my browser, I can also access, or anybody can access all this data just by having essentially the endpoint. So it means it's not secure. Uh, just like Bubble, uh, we need to make sure that we add some privacy um, or, or some authorization to this API endpoint. And we can do that by just essentially selecting the icon at the top here and we can enable authentication. Important thing to remember is you're able to work on your APIs and the changes that you make inside the API won't actually be published to your live um, API endpoint until you choose to publish it. So I'm going to do that. And if I now rerun this item, I'll see that it's now secure as well. Just like Bubble, we require a authorization token to be passed in the header of the request in order to make sure that it's authenticated. Now, you'd also want to make sure that you're doing this for any table in Xano where you want to make sure it's secure. So you can see uh, now that the query or customer records endpoint is secure, we've got this lock here and it's saying that authentication is required, but all these other endpoints are public endpoints. So generally, unless you're working with a blog or something where you want that data to be exposed, you'll generally want to go through and make sure that you disable these as well or require authentication. 
Um, some endpoints that you generally don't want to add authentication to, of course, is your login endpoint and your sign up endpoint, because you're going to need the public to be able to pass through their username and their password. Um, that in itself is their authentication instead of the auth token. And both of these items, both the auth login and the auth sign up, is actually what uh, you use to retrieve a user's access token. And that's how we'll go through and authenticate all of our APIs. But um, more information on how to authenticate a Zeno API and uh, maybe how to add some data into Bubble as well in our coming sessions as well. So I hope this was useful and I hope you can now uh, have uh, secured both your, your Bubble data API and your Zeno APIs as well.